Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. We welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavan class. This morning, the class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami, and Maharaj will be speaking on the beginning of chapter 7, Canto 1, chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, and the, and the chapter is called The Son of Drona Punished. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Maharaj, we, we are still waiting for quite a more devotees to join. I don't know if you would like to make a longer invocation prayer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. That was a nice kirtan you were playing. That uh, sounds like Radhadesh Mellows with, uh, with uh, Govinda, what's his name? Uh, Rinda should know. Rinda, can you answer, Maharaj? It's, it's, uh, Maharaj, Govind it's Ananta Govinda. Ananta Govinda, yeah, Ananta Govinda, and there was also Achuta Gopi was there. Yeah. What year was that? Raj, it was 2018. Oh, I have it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, these young people, Mars, they find all these wonderful, wonderful versions and they've played. I don't know what they find this. <laughs> yeah, Ananta Govinda, he's. I'm not to go with him. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is Mr. Enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Just his smile, Maharaj, is like amazing. And not his smile? Yeah, when he starts chanting, he has this really, um, uh, I, I don't know, but it's like he's so satisfied when he chants and he smiles. Like, like he has this look of satisfaction or completion, completeness or something. Yeah, it's like he, he's like he found himself completely. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj, yes, Maharaj, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've done many kirtans with him and, you know, it's just like powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has a way, he's, he's, he's a very sweet devotee. Yeah, yeah, very sweet. Okay. Om Gyan Timiranda Syakina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmili Tamyena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Bande hum shi guru shi utapa de kamalam shi guru vaishnavam scha shi rupam sagaja tam sahaganat raganatam vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam sarvadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shi radha krishna padam sahagana lalita shri vishakam vitam scha hey krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu, Jagat Pate, Gopesha, Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namos Tate. Antapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavane Swari. Vikabhanu Suti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. Avancha Kalpa, Tarubis Chak, Kripa Sindhu, Beva Chapatitanam, Bhavane Vyo, Vaishnave Vyo, Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana, Prabhupada Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasari Gaur, Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're up to uh, seven, excluding you and me. <laughs> so <laughs> now we're up to eight. Well, I wonder where slowly all my... coming in, March, one by one, they're rushing in. I wonder where my devotees are. They know about this. They're not even there. I see, Maj. There's one, two, three, four, four. I'm, I, you know, probably Sri Devi Mataji can send a quick wake up call, wake up message. I think is the word. Yes. Yeah, I think there needs to be some waking up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll send that right now. Thank you, Ansia. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, I was just at the temple. And Kadambakanda Maharaj was just doing initiations. So uh, we had two devotees that initiated today in Slovenia. 
in person Maharaj? Oh yeah, we're yeah, everything is normal here. Oh nice. That's so I'm so excited. That's nice, wonderful. We don't what's the this idea of COVID? We don't we heard about him, but that's about <laughs> all we heard. <laughs> he doesn't come around. <laughs> I like that, Mar. That's so nice, Mar. Thank you. I'm so glad that we are also opening up here to us like, thank you, Krishna. Enough hibernation. Can't take it anymore. Yeah, it's not even necessary. <laughs> it's so unnatural. It's yeah, it's just a bad cold. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Vitamin C and you're okay. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, two devotees. Um, nice. One one was named Navadvip Chandra. Wow. Name. Powerful name. And the other one, uh, Maharaj wanted to give a name of Krishna that meant one who is compassionate. So he gave him the name Dayalu. Dayalu. Wow. Nice. Those are powerful you know, names. Yeah. That was about 35 people there. Oh, including, nice. the rel including the relatives of both. Mm both candidates, so it was nice. Nice, nice. Oh, I'm so glad. March, when are you coming to the east? I mean, to the, it's not east, I mean, to, to the west part of the globe. To, to uh, US. Boy, I got smashed with, not smashed, I got, in, I got inundated with invitations. <laughs> I'm sure, Maraj, I'm sure. And You're all know. missing your association. Uh, these things are happening here, and uh, we got some programs coming up in July and August. I'm thinking that at maybe the beginning of September well, is when I can actually seriously consider. Okay. I don't know what the situation will be there. And I'm big, I mean, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I can get in. The thing is, if they let me out again, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Krishna, they might keep you here. Well, I, it's getting better here, Marshall. We are hoping for the better because, you know, people are definitely, I mean, it's definitely much better than, than happening in third, other third world countries, but hopefully you can. I hope so. Them. Yeah, these restrictions are just, just harassment. Mm -hmm. We really look forward to, to your association, Marsh, so much. Um, yeah, same here. Let's see, last time I came to your house, we had some nice prashad. <laughs> and precious bread. <laughs> That's, I don't think anything can match that anywhere. <laughs> he makes good bread, Maharaj. That's which I have to admit, admit that he makes good bread. And I he still does. Very good bread, I think. <laughs> okay, we'll get to the verse. Okay. See, we're, how many devotees do we have now? We're up to 10 plus you and me. 11 okay. just came in. Okay, yeah, all right. We're going there, we're getting there. Okay, Sonico Uvacha, Nirgate Narade Sutta, Bhagavam Badarayanaha, Shrutavam Stadabek. Abhipraktam tatakim akrodam vimuhu. A translation. Nrish Sonika Ash, O Sutta, the great and transcendentally powerful Vyasadeva heard everything from Sri Narada Muni. So after Narada's departure, what did Vyasadeva do? Srila mm -hmm. Prabhupada's very succinct report. In this chapter, the clue for describing Srimad Bhagavatam is picked up as Maharaj Parikshit is miraculously saved in the womb of his mother. This was caused by Drowni Asvatama, a Drowni Acharya Drona's son who killed the five sons of Draupadi while they were asleep, for which he was punished by Arjuna. By commencing, before commencing the great epic Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasadai realized the whole truth by trance in devotion. Verse number two. 
Sri uh, Sutta Uvacha Brahma Nadyam Sarasvatyam Ashrama Paschime Tata Samprayasa Ita Iti Prokta Vrishinam Satra Vardhanaha. Sutta Sri Sutta said on the western bank of the river Saraswati, which is intimately related with the Vedas. There is a cottage for meditation at Samyaprasa, which enlivens the transcendental activities of the sages. Purport for advancement of knowledge, a suitable place and atmosphere are definitely required. Hmm. The place on the western bank of the Saraswati is especially suited for this purpose. And there is the ashram of Yasadeva at Samyaprasa. Srila Vyasadeva was a household, yet his residential place is called an ashram. An ashram is a place where spiritual culture is always foremost. It does not matter whether the place belongs to a householder or a mendicant. The whole Van Ashram system is so designed that each and every status of life is called an ashram. This means that spiritual culture is the common factor for all. The brahmacharis, the grihastas, the vanaprasas, and the sannyasis all belong to the same mission of life, namely realization of the supreme. Therefore, none of them are less important as far as spiritual culture is concerned. The difference is a matter of formality on the strength of renunciation. The sannyasis are held in high esteem on the strength of practical renunciation. Srila hmm. Prabhupada Ki Jai. So the first verse kind of gives us a little introduction of the chapter and what some of the intrigue that will uh, well, we unravel as we go into the chapter. This chapter is really a very deep chapter because we find Krishna plays many roles in the chapter and the roles are contradictory. Uh, it's interesting how this chapter and the details of the activities of the Pandavas are um, played out. Um, this chapter causes devotees who are serious about understanding deeper to get involved with great amounts of discussion because what happens is that many of the religious principles that govern the process of bhakti find themselves in conflict with themselves. <laughs> um, so of course, that is the way of spiritual culture. Everything is understood by realization. Mahajano yena katasapanta. The truth, the religious principles are hidden in the heart of the self-realized soul. So when you want to know what is the actual correct understanding as you apply, as you deal with a particular uh, service, situation, dilemma, you have to go to that system of knowledge. And that is, you have to hear from the self-realized souls. The scriptures will give you different points and you can take points from the scriptures, but you'll find yourself sometimes inconclusive because Mahajano Yena Katasupanta that great souls differ, but when one comes to the Mahajans, the great souls, then you'll find that they can clarify everything according to Kaladesha Patra, time, place, and circumstance. So here, in this particular second, Verse. We find a little bit about Vyasa. Um, he's just heard from Narada Muni 
Naramuni has just told him about his life and how he became who he is, Naramuni. Now we're learning about uh, Vyasadev in this chapter and especially the next chapter, we'll see how Vyasadev presents this knowledge for our understanding. Here, um, there's some interesting statements regarding ashram. And ashram simply means place of spiritual culture. Or sometimes we say place of spiritual cultivation. That particular lifestyle that one is placed in, in order for one to practice devotional service. So there's four categories. We have created an extension of one of the categories in our ISKCON society. And that is brahmacharis and brahmacharinis, female, uh, we might say students, and so brahmacharis, brahmacharinis, grihastas, those who are married, manaprastas, those who have gone through married responsibilities are now moving away from that into a more renounced lifestyle, detaching them themselves from all family affairs. And ultimately, the sannyas order of life which generally means traveling preacher mm -hmm. who's fixed on uh, preaching Krishna consciousness. That's their main service. And they may do other things, but this their main service is to preach to the conditioned souls and to raise them up. Mm -hmm. So here Prabhupada makes this point, and it's very important to understand that all of these ashrams are geared towards the same mission, to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. And so there are rules and regulations that apply to each and every uh, ashram. To know the different rules and regulations is important in order to practice successfully. Um, I think the most difficult of all the ashrams to understand what is our responsibilities is the Grihasta ashram. I think everything else becomes easily understood and clarified. The reason why is that in the Grihasta ashram, there is license for regulated sense gratification. Uh, again, regulated, not just whimsical. That means there, uh, because of having to deal with the external energy in maintaining family and sometimes supporting that family with occupation, there is the contact directly with uh, the external energy. And so there is sometimes confusion, complications, and uh, sometimes even uh, fallouts because people are not very clear on what are the rules and regulations of that ashram. But they're nicely delineated, especially in the third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. And you'll find very lengthy descriptions of the rules and regulations of Grihasta Ashram. But what seems to be the difficulty is how which ones apply to them today and which ones don't apply to today. And that there is those categories. Now, what is the most important? of all, aside from the general principles that are given for each of the ashrams, and that is that everyone should chant their prescribed rounds, everyone should uh, associate with devotees. But for grihastas, especially those 
who don't have the opportunity to frequent the temples, they must, and the word is must, establish worship at home. Therefore, DD worship is, uh, it's not optional for Grihastas. In fact, it's very important. As Srila Prabhupada said, if the Grihasta, Grihastas don't engage in deity worship, they're falling down in Krishna consciousness is guaranteed. That's a very direct statement from Srimad Bhagavatam Purport, uh, seventh canto, fifth chapter, verses 22, 23 and 24, wherein the nine process of bhakti are mentioned. So Grihastas have to worship the deity. They must give in charity and they must develop a certain consciousness where they don't become thinking that whatever they have is theirs. Because it's out of all of the ashrams, the Grihastas have to somehow or ever endeavor to get things in order to uh, fortify the needs of the ashram. And by sometimes by working in that way, they start to identify with the principle of moha or uh, mameti, janasa moham, aham, aham mameti, aham mameti. This is I and this is mine. Uh, this is the two forms of false ego, which are uh, parallel to each other, but slightly different in understanding. The I and my, of course, this applies to all the ashrams, but Grihasas have a tendency to become more victimized by the I and mind principle because of their particular lifestyle. They start to think that this is my wife, this is my children, this is my home, this is my possessions. Uh, this mameti, mine, is a principle of the false ego. And the I principle is pretty much common for everyone. And that is we identify ourselves with the body and certain characteristics and genders that the body has. So grihastas always have to be very much aware not to fall into that. When uh, Prabhupada was on one morning walk, he, uh, he was stopping and talking at different intervals and then he would walk on. One time while he was walking on, one grihasta devotee, very nice devotee, ran up to Prabhupada directly and immediately asked him a question, what is the main duty of a Grihasta or one living in family life? Prabhupada stopped, placed his cane on the ground and very thoughtfully answered the question. And he said, the main duty of those in the Grihasta ashram is before you take your food, you must go outside and call very loudly are there any hungry people? Are there any hungry people? Are there any hungry people? If anyone comes forward, then you have to feed them first before you take your food. So the devotee, and then Prabhupada immediately after answering the question, turned around and started walking away, continuing on his walk. The devotee thought maybe Prabhupada didn't understand my question. So he asked, Again, and Prabhupada, again, very patiently uh, responded in the same way, turned around and went on. Uh, the devotee had the audacity again to ask Prabhupada, thinking that Prabhupada didn't understand his question. And Prabhupada sometimes would become a little, what we say, concerned that they didn't get it. But this time he was more emphasizing the principles rather than trying to force them to get it. So he says it again, the same way, answers the same way. So what does that mean in a practical sense? And you might think in Western countries, 
if you do that, you know, you might be seen as, you know, disturbing the peace or something or whatever. It just doesn't fit in. So the idea is that you didn't, one should always understand that whatever I have is meant for the service of others. As I take my prasadam, I should always, you know, offer everything first to Krishna. Even after it's offered, we, we, I think it's a culture in many countries around the world, at least I grew up with it in the United States, that once we would get our food and we were about ready to begin the process of eating, we would always say prayers to the Lord, first thanking the Lord for the food. Of course, we say Sarira Vidya Jaja and that is sufficient. And that helps us to appreciate the process of devotional service that comes by way of accepting transcendental foodstuffs. But then this all goes back to the same principle of detachment. So as it says here, that what is the difference between the different ashrams is the strength of renunciation. It's the strength of renunciation. So, uh, but a grihasta can be very renounced. It doesn't mean because they are in grihasta ashram, they are in a, a lesser position. They're in a position where they have to face well, many of the attractions that come by, come by way of material responsibilities. But that's a test. And those who see everything in relationship to Krishna never uh, consider it belongs to me. It's like one devotee came to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, I want to renounce everything. He was so enthusiastic. Prabhupada said, what do you have to renounce? There's nothing. Everything belongs to Krishna anyway. The only thing we can renounce is the idea that we have something to renounce. Nothing is, everything is given to us, even our body, which we consider to be very dear to us. It's given to us by material energy through our parents. So when we understand this principle, we can use unlimited amounts of things in Krishna's service and at the same time remain completely detached. That's why Srila Bhakti Vinodha Kaur sometimes is called a Paramahansa Grihasta. Hmm. Hmm. That's a term Prabhupada used, Paramahansa Grihasta. Uh, though a Paramahansa who is in, in family life, Bhakti Van Autakor is the ideal example of Grihasta life. Big position in society. He was a high court judge. And of course, he had a family with many children, not just a couple. <laughs> he had 10 children. Yeah, some, some say he had 13. But in any case, he had a lot of children. <laughs> And he also had his uh, uh, responsibilities to come with the positions he had. But he was a very prolific author, author in Krishna consciousness. And not only prolific, but some of the, he was a very deep and innovative spiritual thinker. So here is an example of course, we might think, well, that's Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, that's not me. But the principle is the same, that he's teaching that we also can become fully renounced and still have uh, the amenities that come by way of the necessities of our maintaining our family. And so, yeah. This uh, one has to detach themselves from the I and mind principle. This is I. This belongs to me. Uh, we do have an identity. 
and it's called Jivir Surubai Krishna or Nitya Das. We are eternal servant of Krishna. That's our only identity. There is no second identity. For the, the material identity is ephemeral and will come and go according to the element of time. So it's not so much an important part of our consciousness. What's important is that I'm Krishna's servant. And therefore, I have to follow certain rules and regulations that are conducive to my spiritual practice based on the spiritual ashram that I'm situated in. For example, brahmacharis. Brahmacharis are not meant to associate with the opposite sex. Brahmacharis are meant to study the scriptures. Brahmacharis are meant to carry out menial duties. That's a brahmachari. There's many more duties to a brahmachari, but these are some of the duties that are reflective of the essence of that ashram. Same with grihastas. What is the most important duty? Is to be charitable. Is to be charitable. Uh, for vanaprastha, uh, one should learn the principles of renunciation. And for sannyas, one should not become attached to anything except their ser the service of traveling and preaching. So each of the ashrams has a main focus. San sannyas have to be fearless. The vanaprastha has to be uh, detached. The householder has to be charitable. The brahmachari has to be knowledgeable. These are some of the main duties of each of the the increase of the ashrams. So uh, yeah, and another thing that caught my interest in this particular verse is is the first line: "For spiritual advancement of knowledge, a suitable place and atmosphere are definitely required." Sometimes we have to live in the cities surrounded by the activities of the material world. And uh, we find ourselves being some challenged in our ability to concentrate on Krishna consciousness. So therefore, it is important to understand how best to execute our devotional service. And if one can find a situation that allows one to uh, a maximum amount of focus in devotional service, that's the best. And that's what's being said here. We come to the cities for preaching. Prabhupada didn't want us to live in the cities. He wanted us to live on the farms and preach in the cities. That was his long range proposal for our movement to create farm communities where grihastas can live in a community style atmosphere, share resources, share labor, and then therefore minimize whatever is needed to maintain the family. So that's uh, an element that has to be kept foremost. I was when I was reading that yesterday, I was thinking, hmm, I'm in an atmosphere that's not not like that. But then again, Krishna has put me here. He has a reason for that. I can accept and understand the reason. Yeah. But because we are a preaching movement, we accept some hardships in order to preach Krishna consciousness. Okay, so uh, there's much more we can say on this verse. We could go through all of the different ashrams, but I think most of us are within the Grihasta ashram. And so that is, uh, we sh therefore, learning what is the principles that govern the Grihasta ashram and learning how to apply them accordingly.
Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Definitely a lot of points for discussion, as you said when you were starting the class. This is, I can now see beginning beginning to see why this chapter can bring up a lot of discussions. Are there any questions from devotees? Any uh, uh, sharing, clarification? Please uh, do ask. It's a very nice, and like Maharaj said, many of us here are Grihastas, so I'm sure we may have a lot of questions to ask. I'm just going to go down the list to make sure that I'm not uh, missing anyone's. Um, you, you can either jump in and ask a question or raise your hand. It doesn't matter. Marge, I do have a question. Um, temple. Oh, Sri Devi, Mataji, go ahead. Um, Anasiya, you go ahead and finish. Thank you. Oh, okay. Marge, um, as you mentioned earlier on that the ashram, the, the meaning of ashram is a place for um, a culture and cultivation. And now um, being Kali Yuga, <clears throat> what it is, we look at the temple, ISKCON temples as a place where we learn spiritual culture, cultivation, education. And sometimes uh, devotees uh, tend to look at it as secondary. How can we really help devotees much or how can we ourselves really look at the temple as the foundation, the essence of our spiritual cultivation. Well, we get the chance to see and um, offer our respects to the Supreme Lord who has appeared there in his deity form. It's a place where we can associate with devotees and learn more about the process of Krishna consciousness. It's a place where we can hear lectures from devotees who are speaking on various subjects which are relevant to our practice in Krishna consciousness. It's a place where we can get prasadam from the Lord himself, from the Lord's plate. It has so many benefits. And it's the principle of community that is fundamental. So um, every city should have at least one main temple, and, but we can be living outside uh, we should frequent the temple accordingly, some more than others, but we should not uh, forget about it <laughs> and think I don't need it. We may have responsibilities in the home with the family, with work. And so the temple is not, that doesn't become uh, our whole life becomes a place where we can, you know, get relief from the material energy by going there, associating, sitting and chanting, just being in the atmosphere. These temples, as Prabhupada said, they're like oases in the desert. Another example he used, they're like, uh, they're like, uh, what is it? Uh, embassies in the material world. If you go to an embassy, say you go to the American embassy in Russia, you're in America, you're not in Russia. Although you're in the country of Russia, you're under the jurisdiction of that embassy. So in the same way, when we walk into the temple, we are in Vaikuntha, we're in the spiritual world, because the main activity there is worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So these temples provide shelter, knowledge, facility, and principles of worship. And, and they help to inspire community. Well, they're important, very important. Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi, you can go ahead. Sri Devi? Uh, please accept oh, my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this wonderful lecture again yeah. on the importance of the different ashrams and with the special emphasis on Grihastha ashram. My question is about Vanaprastha ashram. Where can we read up more about the principles of bhakti for Vanaprastha stage of life? Where can we read more about Vanaprastha? Well, hmm. 
we haven't really outlined a clear, uh, you know, plan for the Vanaprast ashram in our society because the society is basically uh, mixed, in other words. But we find that there are a few lectures that have been given. And one of the main points in Vanaprastha Ashram is that one should go to a holy place and live their life in the holy place. That's the main thing. Detach yourself. There's no reason to be surrounded in the material energy anymore. The word Vanaprast is forest dweller. That's the actual term. But who's going to go to the forest now? And it's not practical anyway. You can't live in the forest. Nobody, the austerity is too great. Uh, if you can do it, <laughs> you're glorious, but it's not recommended. And recommended is to worship, to continue our bhakti and to worship. So places like Mayapur, Vrindavan, you know, some of the holy places in India, such as Rameshwar, Hardwar, Tirupati, some of the known holy places around the world, uh, it's recommended that one goes there, lives there, and takes up service to the deity there as their focus in life, detaching themselves from all family responsibilities. That's a little bit of a practical explanation of the ashram. So you don't get so much uh, information like that, but there are, you have to maybe go on, um, what is it, uh, Desire Tree, and see if there's lectures that are, have been given by uh, devotees on Vanaprast Ashram. I remember in, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, we were in Mayapur and there was an arrangement for some senior devotees to come and speak about uh, Van Ashram or Vanaprastha Ashram. And it became a really interesting discussion. I was one of the participants and we got into some real interesting discussions because right now it was in the, it was in the formulation stage. But the essential thing is living in a holy place and serving the deity there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So when are you going to get there? <laughs> <laughs> trying, Guru Maharaj, trying. I just wrote you another letter today. You can read it and you see. If you see if you like it or not. <laughs> okay, Guru Maharaj, please help me. Your mercy is essential. This letter is what you're asking for. <laughs> Sri Devi is getting so much mercy. Wow, you're so blessed, Sri Devi Mataji. <laughs> She's got all the desires, but she uh, has some plans that keep reappearing that shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> the curveball, as they say, Marge, that gets thrown in our faces. <laughs> yeah, well, Maya reminds us, well, you know, you, you still like this, and you still got to do this, and you, you know, you should do this, and everybody else is doing it, so you, why are you any different? Maya is very good at giving us so many things that about why we shouldn't be moving to our next position in Krishna consciousness. She's expert in that. <laughs> yeah, as soon as she sees you're serious about moving forward, here comes all the alternate plans. <laughs> wow. That's a lesson yeah. for, for me to hear too, Maharaj. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We, even, do, even new devotees, when they want to join Krishna consciousness, Maya will remind him, well, you got to do this. What about this and this responsibility and this person and that? <laughs> she does that just to test you and see about how determined you are. Wow. 
Thank you, Maharaj. Mother Gita, please ask your question, Mother. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glorious to Shri Prabhupada, all glorious to you. Thank you so much for your darshan. I wish it is every day, but <laughs> um, I, my question was the same one uh, about Vanaprastha Ashram. So you mentioned that the uh, main principle is to reside in a holy place. What if, um, can one still be in Vanaprastha Ashram and not reside in holy place? and try to make the home a holy place? Yeah, but I mean, that seems to be a last resort. Not only the designated holy places, but any temple in our movement is considered to be a holy place. So one can also live in the temple and perform service to the deity there and make that their you know, life's focus. In the home, you're still surrounded by all the memories of the past and all whatever else is still there. It can be done, but you have to be really determined. Uh, still, we haven't clarified in a real extensive way what are the duties of, of uh, Vanaprast. It hasn't really been clarified. Uh, I think out of our meeting that we had many years ago, there were some devotees who were designated to, to write about and research further principles that could be inculcated as, the, as a way to practice Vanaprastha. So. I hope that helped Mother Gita. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, if you lived in your particular home for so many years and then all of a sudden you find yourself in this now retirement ashram, you're going to find again many of the things that kept you attached still going to be there. Thank you, Maharaj. Namita, Martini, you can ask your question. Yeah, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you, Maharaj, and my humble obeisances to all the devotees on the call. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. So Maharaj, my question is a very pra practical question, which I always struggle with. I don't know if you've already answered the question and I wasn't paying full attention, but you know, I get very passionate with my kids, their homework, their school, you know, like teaching them, like making sure that they're doing all of this and then making prashadam. So how do I detach myself? Because sometimes I do think that, you know, uh, it's, it's not, uh, I shouldn't be spending all this time, you know, on them. But I, I don't know how, how like, you know, well, they, how have much to, they have to grow up also. Mm -hmm. You have to give them a chance to grow up and take on more responsibility. So as a parent, you're a guider. A teacher and a guider, but you can't be, you know, a a constant manager all the time. That's not your role, and it also ruins the relationship. Better to learn to guide them and teach them the responsibilities that they need to know in order to, you know, take on what they're doing in life. Uh, even if they fail to do it, it doesn't. It's good. It's a good lesson for them to learn. It's like when you learn to swim sometimes, you know, they push you out into the deep water and then you got to make it. <laughs> so, yeah, we have to be sometimes given a uh, let, let go and so they can uh, learn from themselves. If you feel like you've sufficient, sufficiently taught them everything you can teach them in terms of what they need to do and the responsibilities that come with it, then you can back off more and, and allow them to to go on with their life instead of trying to you know manage everything for them. That's that doesn't work. I think now they're good. too young right now. They're seven and eleven. Not sure if I've managed to teach them things. You know, that I can back off. All right. So you can teach them both the responsibility and the activities. 
but um, 11, I mean, you're going to have 11. I mean, I know your son, he's quite intelligent. He can, he can pick up things quite easy. He doesn't, unless he becomes overly dependent, then that's a problem. Yes, Maharaj, I think you're right. Then maybe I should start slowly backing off with him and yeah, then start training my daughter. Yeah. Gradually, gradually, gradually. Give them a chance to see how what they can do from what you've already taught them. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, I do have another question. So I remember you saying that, you know, there's obviously all these holy dhams and it's advisable to be living there. If you can't get to them, but if you can manage to get to India and live in Delhi, is it better to live in Delhi or in India rather than living well, in London? Well, right now, I don't know. <laughs> you, since you picked Delhi out of all the cities in India, you know, you kind of like, you, know, you kind of like threw a, a major, uh, I mean, it didn't, Delhi, Delhi is the one of the most crowded, polluted, and crazy cities in the entire India. <laughs> yes, yeah. I only picked up Delhi because it's really close to Vrindavan. So rather than living in Vrindavan, at least we can then keep making trips. So this is my retirement plan, you know. <laughs> All right, well, you can live. There are many temples in Delhi. In yes. Fact, um, there's actually about 15 different temples in the in the greater Delhi area. Many wonderful temples. We have a yes, big part part of Sarti temple there too. So you'll definitely get good association there. Mm -hmm. But is it any better than being in India rather than being in London or any other European countries? Because then at least you're closer to Dham. You can't live in Dham, but at least you can go visit the Dham more frequently. Um, I've chased a lot of Indians who came to the West back to India. <laughs> so, um, and they all, they also thank me for that. But right now with the present situation where it's a little calamitous, I think, uh, right now you should, you know, make your plans in a very careful way before you actually make a big move. Let's see. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, but I give you one last point, and this is this is a practical point. Before you go any place to live, go there to visit. Yes, Maharaj. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not it's not like an uh, immediate plan. It is. You know, obviously, you know, kids are still young and, you know, we're very settled here in London, but this could be something, you know, towards like the next 15 years that eventually we retire in India and then we live there. But yeah. Yeah, I, I stay with one family who is um, in Delhi. They're, they were they were born in India and then at one point they left and went to Australia, lived in Australia for many, many years. And their family, their child grew up mostly in Australia and they came back to India. <laughs> so one of the hardest things that they had was readopting to the Indian lifestyle. Yes, Maharaj, it can be hard, especially for the kids. Yeah. If you if you are a coconut, you know what a coconut is. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> brown on the outside. Brown, brown on the outside and white on the inside. That's yes, a coconut. Maharaj. Yeah, Maharaj, but I wouldn't class my kids as coconut because I think we're very Indian, you know, and and all our families back home, and we live here like you know mostly in a bubble with Indian devotees, you know. Mostly Indian devotees, but of course there's other devotees as well. So I think our kids are very close to, you know, to the Indian culture. So I, I think they, they should be fine. Uh, I would recommend it, but it should be definitely planned out very carefully. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna. <laughs>
Are there other questions from the voice? Yes, Diptesh Prabhu, go ahead. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. Thank you for this wonderful uh, session. Um, there are some nice uh, finer points on the ashram. Maharaj, I have a question um, following on um, the previous discussion with the Q&A session. So if you are serving a temple in any, in any position, would you still consider um, looking for other places physically or, or, or another dham or another temple that you should do? Or if you have a service which you are doing at the local temple or in terms of preaching, should you continue that in the in the Varnashram sort of aspect? Well, why would you, what would be the reason for change? No, I don't, uh, there shouldn't be, but um, it, it could be you might get too familiar and <laughs> too attached. <laughs> uh, but that's why I'm not sure whether what should be the the right thing and the right thought. Again, that's a practical question. You have to take some and just collect advice from different people and see what are the uh, pros and cons. The most important thing is where can you practice Krishna consciousness in the most easiest and most direct way, which is suitable for your ashram. That would be the point. If it's maintaining the griha, that means the home, then you have to see that also is a factor that will affect your spiritual practice. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur talks about that in. Um, Let's see, I can't think of the name. Uh, Chaitanya Shikshamrita, yeah. About establishing our material foundation as a basis for executing Krishna consciousness where that material foundation becomes a support to our spiritual life. Just like I see there, there are people who are not married and uh, they don't really define their ashram clearly. They're not brahmachari or brahmacharini, they're not krihasta. And uh, therefore their material situation as life is not supportive of their spiritual practice. Because ashram again is, we have a choice. We should be in one of the four ashrams. And each ashram has its rules and regulations. Deeptesh Prabhu, I hope that helped. Yes, yes. No, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Are there other questions from devotees? Maharaj, I have a question. Um, in today's times, you know, in today's world, like where ISKCON is at right now, it's, ISKCON is pretty much a grihasta based you know, more than what it used to be in the 70s, 80s, or even the 90s, where we, you don't see that many brahmacharis. I think seeing a brahmacharis is like, oh my gosh, wow, amazing. And we see so many grihastas. And if the grihastas mean, and at the same time, you know, the temples have to be maintained, services has to go on. And if the temples, and if ISKCON is pretty much grihasta based and the grihastas main duty is to be charitable, how can the grihastan main duty being charitable still help to maintain the physical maintenance and the services and the preaching to continue? Um, hmm. You mean those who are living in the temple? Well, you know, Marge, actually now it's, a, it's a, even kind of rare to find so many people live in the temple, but just, you know, just like helping with services, making sure that the temple goes on, the program goes on, the preaching goes on. 
Yeah, because that, that could be done as a service, that's all. And Prabhupada didn't want Griha. Generally, he wanted Grihastas to live separate so they could raise their families. But I, but then taking it, the next step is community. Creating a Grihasta community for one's livelihood and uh, keeping the center of the temple as a place where you could go and offer services and receive spiritual, you know, benefit. What is very inspiring to me, Marge, is that the that the temple in Singapore, uh, I, I I think ninety nine percent of that of of the Singapore temple is run by grihastas who don't live in the temple. When I visited there in 2012, I was so, actually 2015, 12, I was so shocked, Maharaj, how the temple is completely Grihastha based and they run it seven days a week. It was, it was very, it was a nice inspiration for me. That's there and also in other temples too. Mm -hmm. We have our temple in Houston, Texas. That's also, mo it's practically all Grihastha based. Marge, in, in knowing that there are temples that exist that where it's all Grihastha based, and there are other temples who are just, you know, uh, you know, beginning to start up on grassroots levels with Grihastas, and seeing the phenomena of how these Grihastha based temples are able to really, you know, run the temple being Grihastas, how can we have that same mood in other temples, Marsh, to build that understanding, that culture? <laughs> well, you know, I have my opinions about that, and you're going to get different opinions on from different people who you talk to. <laughs> so I don't know if I should give you my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's, it's opinion only. That's fine, Mars. I think whatever, I don't know, whatever works best. You have to have the renounced mood there, otherwise it's just gonna be just like a church, you know? <laughs> I think that word Marge is powerful, the, the, the mood of renunciation, just as what it says in the verse. And I that's think it. much in, yeah, that's and it. you that's... even mentioned it Marge. In fact, a, you, go ahead Marge, I'm sorry. Our whole, yeah, our, our whole panta, panta means our, our path of execution of devotional service is vairagya. Vairagya vidya nija bhakti yoga, established by Lord Chaitanya. We are a movement of vairagya. We are not a movement of simply doing religious activities and calling ourselves a society. We're not about plugging into the materialist society and becoming just like them. <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, we're about getting out of the materialist society and recreating a spiritual society. There's, there's where you have to have that, that strong mood of renunciation there. Otherwise it becomes a nice church. <laughs> Everybody goes, they meet their family, they talk about what they did the, the whole week and have some prashad and go home and nothing changes. I can agree to that, Maharaj. <laughs> but I really but like this point. We are a movement of Vairagya. That's really, really powerful, Maharaj. Yeah, therefore the leaders have to be always pushing the participants in that direction. Mm both in service and in lifestyle both mm. i won't name a particular uh yatra but i know one yatra where they give so much service to the grihasas they don't have time to take care of their families <laughs> And so, you know, they become more renounced. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works. It doesn't work with everybody, but it works. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Maharaj. Diptesh Prabhu, you, you know, Grihastha, I'm sorry, Maharaj. You no, know, Grihastha life, life is unlimited. It's just like it expands itself, mm. you know. Uh, it just keeps expanding itself more and more and more. You know, you're just kind of, that's why you have to keep the Grihasthas somewhat connected through, you know, the activities of the temple and through various types of services. Otherwise, they they make maintaining their family as their main service. And that's not that's not the goal. Yes, yes, Maharaj. That's a good balance. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Are there? Yes, Vrindavan, not Prabhu. Please ask your question, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is uh, related to uh, this dham. Like, uh, in fact, like a few weeks back, I was having a discussion with one of my uh, friend, office colleague, who is not in Ishkon, but uh, he is in Gaudiya Vaishnav, like Sampradaya. He is following another Sampradaya. And uh, he was saying that my Guru Maharaj is asking to move to Brindavan, should move, like should live in Holy Dham, otherwise there is a waste of life. And my discussion with him was, uh, as you was rightly saying few minutes back, that we should try to focus more on Krishna consciousness, how to develop our devotions and sadhana, rather than thinking that, okay, just we have to move to Vrindavan or some particular place because if we are living in Vrindavan but our mood is not having full right consciousness then there is no value so is that then correct you're not, like, then you're not living in Vrindavan if, if you don't have that mood yeah because you mentioned in one of the other lecture Guru Maharaj that we should try to visit holy places as much as possible at least those holy places which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could visit if possible in this lifetime not possible for all but what we should at least aim for that so yeah. that's like something we need to like visiting like whenever opportunity is given try to aim for that but like relocating to certain place at least as a grahastha it's like looks a bit challenging i'm not sure whether i'm thinking right guru maharaj or Well, there, there's where you need it. I mean, that's not something you can just make a split decision on. You have to, you have to see the whole picture, and it requires some discussion, some planning, some understanding. But generally, you know, if you want, I mean, there's, there's many options besides just moving to a holy place. There's other options. The idea is to see, are we moving forward in our Krishna consciousness or are we moving forward and in, in becoming expert grihastas, maintaining our family, getting better jobs, more money, more material facilities, more of the griha. Is our expertise uh, showing in that area or actually are we... Uh, I mean, it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, you should be whole, every grihasta should hold programs at their home regularly, invite the sannyasis, the traveling preachers, and and hear lectures on Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and distribute prasadam. This has to be, this, I mean, if we're not doing that, we're simply living in grihasta life and we're just, and we're not really going to make much progress. That's that's a recommendation. It's also a regulative principle. <laughs> if you're not doing that, at least you should be regularly going to the temple and becoming a part of the temple activities, which includes preaching and, you know, programs related to, you know, deity worship. In other words, in a, if we're only spending like a couple hours a week doing devotional activities and the rest of the time maintaining our family, then there's some question about, um, our, you know, what are we going to, I think we need to move out of that.
Thank you, Guru. And the West, the West allow just the living in the Western culture means more and more material things, more and more responsibilities with family and and job. How deep do you want to go into that at the at the expense of our spiritual practice? Practice. I mean, Prabhupada had to give it all up. You know, he was trying to maintain his family and maintain his business. But at one point he saw that he had to choose. And he chose, you know, to leave everything and just go to Vrindavan. But if you can make your, your family Krishna conscious there and make your home an ashram, a place where there are spiritual activities going on every day, not just on Sunday, then there's no reason to change. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's quite helpful. I actually uh, had similar discussion with him that, yes, like we should try to focus and I like take that like as a good directions, uh, guidance from you, Guru Maharaj, that yes, at home, like we should try to have more and more uh, Vaishnavas at our home, serve them, like whether yeah. sannyasis and all. That Programs, stuff. Vaishnavas, discussions, kirtans. Yes. That way the children get good exposure too. That was a nice question, Vrindavanath Prabhu. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, there's a beautiful prayer by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Uh, I can't remember all of the Sanskrit. Yari te yari parasarora saram prananartha prana. Nahi gritya kriyam kalabhava mayam vajagodumakan in the kunjam vidu. Let me see. Uh, the, the thing is right on my, uh, it says here. There. Of course, this is for the materialistic household. So I'll read it. So nice. It's a beautiful prayer, 19 verses by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Uh, let me see. Yadi te hadi para sarora sudha. Rasa prana param riddayam satatam pari ritya griham kali bhava mayam bhajagodrum kan in the kunja It says, If you want your heart to be always absorbed in drinking the ambrosial medals of the lotus feet of Lord Hari, and give up household life, which is full of quarrels and strife, and just worship Lord Gora, the moon of Godruma forest. Of course, that's not your situation, and that we don't recommend you giving up household life. But this verse applies to the materialistic householder who is simply absorbed in maintaining family, and it's always struggle, struggle, struggle. It's important that all the members of the household are on the same page with devotional service. Then, Prabhupada says, the home is Vaikuntha. It's Vaikuntha. Make the home Vaikuntha. Thank you, Maharaj. There's a question from Leela Manjari, Mataji. You can ask a question, Prabhu. Hare okay. Krishna Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you and all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me, Maharaj? Good. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, yeah, this was a very, very interesting discussion about renunciation. And um, I also like very much uh, feel inspired when you speak about this topic of renunciation. Uh, I had, uh, I made an observation, like, um, especially in the community that I live in, what I have noticed is that um, the children of Grihastas who lived like slightly far away from the temple and they were focused mostly on raising their kids, their kids um, 
like you know have taken to krishna consciousness more seriously than people who lived and served at the temple like day in and day out like almost to the point of like in some cases like neglecting their uh, parental responsibilities and um i i see like a kind of hurt in those children towards their parents which they don't like really verbalize but like almost like a kind of it they are so hurt in one sense like that they don't even want to come to the temple so um what what has been my thought process is that like children like need a lot of attention and if that attention is not given to them in their early years it becomes harder for them to accept krishna consciousness so um uh, that's how i feel but like would you like to add something to um well i'm not i wasn't aware of that dynamic when i'm sure what i'm sure your observation is correct because it it seems to have some logical basis to it um yeah you can't neglect your responsibility as a parent in terms of giving the children a balance of the activities that are necessary for growing up according to the care that is also needed education care guidance so yeah you have but i'm only assuming that the persons that were closer to the temple that lived more in the temple that seem now to be more adverse to temple life they they uh they were kind of like forced into it at the expense of losing something that was part of what they needed in life uh, where those who are uh, out in the suburbs they had the uh, they had the, the privilege of all the activities of growing up nicely with a good family and many of the material things needed and now they're more you know as they grow up they're more gravitating towards krishna consciousness now so uh, it's really hard to generalize in this sense because there are individuals that fit both categories and then there are individuals in each of those categories that may be in the other category <laughs> cuz there are some that did grow up in that very strict environment and stayed in it and then there's others who didn't but i think you're talking in terms of uh percentage or the majority so it's a, it's an interesting thing is i mean i've been instructed certain persons who've had uh uh what you call it family responsibilities who are neglecting that in order for them to do their service at the temple and i told them you can't do that because after a while you lose both so you have to make sure you take keep, do the responsibility and then that requires some discrimination on how to balance you know your spiritual life with your material needs and so there when you come back to a formula there's where community becomes a supportive aspect when we try to do it alone we want to find out there's more effort in putting everything together and when the community is more of a supportive type thing so creating community even within the uh, urban culture so yeah um i don't doubt what you say i just don't really all i can give is a general principle that there, there we shouldn't neglect our responsibilities in the family at the expense of spiritual uh activities but then again we have to understand how to balance these two mm -hmm. there's time for both and the success is the 
is the example that the parents exhibit. If they're balanced in their life, they're spending, you know, they're able to manage the family nicely, and at the same time, they're able to practice their Krishna consciousness. And in Chicago, because I know about Chicago to some degree, there are many like that. There are many like that who, like that, who, yeah, who have uh, have been successful in doing that. And there's others who have not been successful. <laughs> so. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it gives me a broader perspective. Uh, I think what, what from your sharing. Yeah, the what if you're looking for something to answer the question, I think when community is there, the support f factor is enhanced greatly. Mm -hmm. Without community, you're just kind of like struggling mm. more. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Marge, if, if I may add something, if you will allow me on what you just said, is um, it reminded me of this proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Right. Based on the community. And um, if everyone works together, the child will, will not feel neglected. But it's very important um, that children... At, 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 at least in my experience with both my daughters, uh, I made sure that at least up until the age of 17, 18, at least 18, I was, I made sure that, you know, they had the balance and they were not neglected. And they were always with us when it came to service. So they were always under my nose. <laughs> Never yeah. away. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and what I've seen with my girls, Marge, is, you know, even though we were doing service and they were with us, they naturally also got, in, got the taste of service. They, they never hated service. They never hated the temple. They never were, uh, uh, you know, disgusted by it. They just said, oh, I want to be part of it too. So they were always with us. And at the same time, you know, we made sure that they were not neglected. That helped. Yeah. And there were those that were in that same environment that went away. So again, it comes back to the parents. <laughs> yes. And mm -hmm. like you said, Marge, it's the balance. It's definitely the balance. Yes. Yeah, that takes observation. Make sure that you're seeing. Yes. You don't always see things going off right away. But when you do, when you notice it, then you have to rebalance again. Mm hmm yes and you uh, also had, i mean you yes, also sir. had community there so that was good yes marriage yes definitely it definitely um had community because um it, it does definitely takes a village to raise a child and plus everyone's children was everyone's you know it wasn't just you know everybody came to us like we all their mothers there wasn't a segregation and that was the beauty of that community and and so many uh, ideal people came out of that who are now doing wonderful service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maraj. It was definitely a good grounding for us to have that. Thank you. I think I see a comment. Oh, um, yeah, in the comment, Rohini said, as a Guru Kuli herself, she, uh, she, she understands many of my friends from childhood won't step in into a temple because of feeling of neglect from the family yes i've heard that many many times and sri devi said the heart and soul connection a vision of a guide to marriage service love book by the grihastha vision team that mother krishna nandini put together she talked about that and and sri devi said and karma of that particular soul with all the good parenting child may choose differently hmm. Yeah. So um, that's yeah, you have to give that balance. And the Quakers, they have an interesting, not the, not the Quakers, but the Amish. The Amish, yes. 
uh, when, ch when the child gets 19 years old, they say, all right, you have to go out now and live for a year outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mandatory for the child to go out for a year. And if you want, you can stay out. But the majority of the, the, of the young people return because they've been brought up so nicely in their community that, and they can see both the love and the, uh, and the spiritual foundation that they were subjected to, they couldn't find it any other way. Again, that is community. That's the power of community. Thank you, Maharaj. Are there other questions from devotees? Any clarification, any sharing? Liha Manjri Mataji, would you like to say something? Your hand is still raised. I, I assume that you have a question. No, Mataji, I'm sorry. It's okay. I just didn't want to not, no, it's, it's okay. I just didn't want to not you know, Thank forget you. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Marge, if there are no questions, Marge, I have a humble request, Marge. You look, I'm sure you're very tired because of the initiation. You don't have to feel compelled to chant one round if you don't need to, Marge, because I know you had a long day. You look like you had a long day. But I want to ask you first. I'd like to chant with all of you, but I'm thinking it'll be a little bit mixed with some other activities. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, uh, Maharaj. I could tell okay. that you're tired. <laughs> it's not that. It's just I'm. Uh, I have. A, I'm lately. I'm struggling with computeritis. Oh, computer! Oh, <laughs> I had to think of what the word meant. <laughs> yeah, I get. I get tired being on the computer. It's. It's becoming more and more prevalent now. I know. It's so automated. And I'm uh, trying to reduce. And... That's fine, Maraj. We can end, Maraj, if that's okay with you. That way you don't have to get tired again. Well, but... it's not that. I would like to serve nicely, but let me... if you want to give it a try, we can go for it. Let's see yes, Maraj, absolutely. What I, I'm at your service, Maraj, whatever you would like to do. I mean, chanting the holy name of the Lord is, is a wonderful an invitation. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, Marge. But uh, I have to warn everybody, I'm going to have to chant fast in order to stay awake. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep up with you, Marge. <laughs> okay. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaurabha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hare Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Hari.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Ram Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hare Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Ram Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Hari Krishna Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And thank the, all the devotees for joining us. Vancha Krapati Vyas Chakri Prasindu Bevacha. Patita Nambhava Nebhya Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness Chandramali Swami Ki Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and for the wonderful class. And we thank the devotees for joining us today. And have a wonderful, blessed Krishna Conscious Day. <laughs>